Welcome to the Hydric and Struggles Leadership Podcast, the premier provider of leadership consulting, culture shaping, and senior level executive search services. Every day, we're privileged to talk with fascinating people who are shaping the future through their leadership and vision. Each episode, you'll hear a different perspective from thought leaders and innovators. Thanks for listening to the Hydric and Struggles Leadership Podcast. Hello. I'm Susie Clements, a partner in the Hydric and Struggles London office and co-managing partner of the Global Financial Officers Practice. In today's podcast, I'm speaking to Lloyd Pitchford, CFO and board member of Experian, the multinational consumer credit reporting company. Lloyd is also a non-executive director and chairs the audit committee of Bunzel PLC. Lloyd, welcome and thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you, Susie. Lloyd, the digital revolution is having a tremendous effect both on businesses and on the next generation of leaders, including CFOs. In your opinion, what are the key leadership skills a modern CFO should have? I think the data and information revolution is is having a really profound effect on, on all companies. It's both creating and destroying businesses and business models with uh, just an increased pace. And that really means companies have to do two things. One, really understand what's happening in their external environment and then create a a process by which they can innovate and respond more quickly. And an external focus is key to that. Understanding what's happening in your markets but also technology is, is more critical than ever. How have your responsibilities broadened beyond pure finance workflow automation? So at Experian, we're in many different markets globally, not just uh, geographic markets, but we do lots of different things in the, in the data and information space. So the involvement in the innovation process, how we uh, invest in early startup companies through our venture fund, the M&A programs that we have, the change and technology uh, development programs in the company, all of them ultimately in one way or another uh, require investment and therefore come into me. So my role is very broad. And how is technology influencing the modern CFO leadership development? The, the way to think about that, businesses thrive through creating competitive advantage. More than ever before, technology, data and innovation coming together is, is how companies are increasingly creating competitive advantage. If you look back, we've gone through different stages of, of development of people leverage into systems and uh, machinery leverage, we're now in the world of data and technology leverage. So if you don't really understand how data and technology is impacting on your competitive advantage as a company, it's hard to survive and thrive. So that's really where competitive advantage in the modern economy is built. And can you think of some examples to share with us on that? I I think if you look back just at the number of companies that Uh, were really mainstays of the uh, global uh, industry and how their their business models have just been destroyed by technology. Kodak is a really good example. We've seen BlackBerry, Nokia, companies that were market leaders. Technology moves past them quite quickly. And this is why innovation is really key because innovation is a proxy for your ability to be able to respond quickly and change your business model in a world where the pace of change is increasing. And as new technologies change, both the day-to-day work of the finance function and the competitive landscape, what should CFOs do to stay ahead of the curve? A couple of different things, um, I think. The first is having an external focus. Quite often when you're involved in the management and leadership of a company, it's very, particularly in in the finance uh, area where there's a lot of uh, focus on internal process, it's very easy to be to be drawn to that. But ultimately, it's the external market and your position within it that that determines uh, your long term success. So, keeping an external focus is key. I think really deeply understanding performance in that external uh, context is is the second. We we have this phrase and experience of of trying to get to the truth of performance. And the truth of performance is a, is a really difficult thing. If you're growing 10%, that sounds good. If you are in a market that's growing 20, 10 doesn't sound too good. If you're in a market that's growing 20, your main competitor is growing 5, that sounds better. What is the truth of performance? And 
that requires a really deep understanding of not just your internal performance, but your position in your markets. And how do you get to that by looking at the external market? Lots and lots of data. Integrating lots of different data points, being uh, continuously scanning for new pieces of data that tell you that perhaps your market shifted, being ever uh, driven to make sure that you're not complacent about your position in the market. Just when you feel great is often the, the time when your market's just about to shift. And how are you innovating in the finance team in Experian? Experian obviously is a, a leading a data and, and technology company. So that gives us a lot of advantages to how we can use and manage data uh, within the finance function. So we have been very focused on, on data management, data governance in the finance function. We have uh, data management teams of data scientists within the finance function, governing data so that we can uh, transmit data between all of the different functional systems in an easy way and making data do the work for us uh, rather than having to bring it together uh, manually. So one of the the projects we've had, for example, over the last uh, two years is fully integrating our data between our, our CRM system, our sales reporting system and our ERP to allow automatic forecasting. That's a, been a big drive uh, across the company, which is no, no mean feat when you think about a, a company in uh, over 40 countries globally. And how has that been working? It's work in progress, as, as all these things are. There's um, some good, good things that are coming from it, but there's a lot, more, a lot more still to do. So Lloyd, thinking about the continuous changes that new technologies and digital innovation are bringing, how can CFOs help their companies disrupt rather than be disrupted? I think that comes to seeing the bigger picture. As a CFO, you're in a very unique position in a company to be able to tie all the different information threads together and see not just how you're performing, but also perhaps why you're performing in that way, which often can be some of the external changes uh, that I talked about, whether it be technology or industry or market forces. That's key. That that up-to-date understanding of where you are is critical to be able to then plot your next your next move. So using that positional advantage in the company to be able to tie all the information together and the insight that comes from it. A recent McKinsey study shows that in this moment in time, CFOs have more than ever before the opportunity to act as a leading change agent within their companies. Do you agree with that statement? Yeah, I do. Principally because of just how much data there is to have to integrate to understand where a company is. And that that is that's changing the role of the CFO. It's changing uh, the understanding of what performance is and, and the CFO's role is really at the heart of that. And what are the main challenges of implementing new technologies and how do you avoid them? Most large organizations um, in the end run some form of matrix. And there's no right answer to how you organize yourself as a, as a company, but the interfaces between the different pieces of the business are are often the trickiest thing. To be able to make the most of data and information, as we, we do here, here at Experian, you have to be able to integrate data across the different parts of your organization. And that that requires, more often than not, doing things in a common way. Structuring your data hierarchies similarly um, and, and having a, a common tool to be able to integrate integrate the data. And the best tool I, I think you have is lots of changes, but all pointing in the same direction, is a, a more powerful tool than trying to make a small number of big changes. It's less likely for something to go wrong. Uh, it's much more agile, and you can make changes as you go. And you're much more likely to get buy-in and less resistance from your colleagues in a company. That's probably the best change management technique that that I've found over my career. In your experience, what technology is most valuable for finance and how is it best utilised? I think the thing that adds most value 
in a finance organisation is ultimately the intellect and leadership of the of the finance team. That that it's not a technology, but it's the most important thing that you you leverage. But in in terms of most recent technology, the ability for data to be portable. It used to be if you had uh, multiple systems, you had to integrate them with hard coded pipes. With the introduction of modern technology around API layers and how you can draw data together, it makes it portable in a way that uh, it hasn't been at a much lower cost and, and, and uh, cost of change than you've seen before. And that really is transforming how the different enterprise systems get tied together. So that's probably the a very recent technology that I think will transform uh, finance. And I think of this next few years very similarly to or well, it has the potential to be as transformative as the introduction of the spreadsheet or the ERP system. And you think about how the role of finance will change. If you were to give one piece of advice to future leaders about what they most need to do today to thrive, what would that be? I think in the early stages of your career, you pick up both skills and experience, but the skills are the most important thing. And you you pick up skills when you're out of your comfort zone. So my advice to to, uh, members of the team here at Experian is always to throw yourself into situations and roles that are constantly out of your comfort zone. That's how you'll grow as an individual. And what you find later on in your career is it's that bedrock of experience that you fall back on and rely on because you're you're mostly out of your comfort zone most of the time. Um, so it's a good to have got used to that earlier on in your career. Lloyd, thank you for making time to speak with us today. Pleasure. Thank you, Susie. Thanks for listening to the Hydrogen Struggles Leadership Podcast. To make sure you don't miss more future shaping ideas and conversations, please subscribe to our channel on the podcast app. And if you're listening via LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube, why not share this with your connections? Until next time.